Okay. And if you could spell your first and last names for us, please. Okay. Let me just ignore that. Okay. My <laughs> name is Giselle Uribe. G-I-S-E-L-L-E-U-R-I-B-E. -E. All right. Thanks. Um, and now that we have that spelled, can you just introduce yourself, say what year you are um, at Princeton, and what you club you're in? Yeah. I'm, my name is Giselle Uribe. I'm a third year. Um, I'm majoring in molecular biology, um, certificate in engineering biology, and I'm in Cloister. All right, nice. Um, and when did you join Cloister? I joined Cloister the beginning of my fall semester of junior year. All right, um, and what sort of factors factored into deciding to be in a club? Well, I think for me especially, like it was always, I thought I was going to be in an eating club just because like I thought that was like what majority of the people did. Like I didn't really consider the other options as much as um, some people may. And it was just that a lot of my friends were in Cloister and I would love having meals with them like in the first two years. So it'd be great to continue that as my Princeton career went on. Okay, yeah. Um, and were there, would you say there were financial factors that you weighed when you thought about joining a club or being independent? Yeah, definitely. Well, like, so I know like during with full, I'm on full financial aid. So what they do is if I don't choose to be on the dining plan, I get that money and then that goes towards being independent. And I think they add like a thousand more than the regular um, eating plan. And then that's what you get. But I'm very bad at budgeting. And so that was something I considered. So it was either going to be me on the dining plan or me in an eating club. And I know that um, financial aid goes up a little bit in order to cup to like try to subsidize the eating club fees, but it's still like 2000. I think that what I need to pay in the fall and a thousand in the spring. And my parents don't even know I have to pay this. Um, so like what I'm doing is I'm just getting a loan from financial aid, which is really funny because it's like Princeton money, but they're loaning me it. But anyways, yeah. You're doing great. Thanks. You're totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind us talking for like five more minutes, and if you could be kind of silent. <laughs> more silent than Charles. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright. Um, all right, so you were talking about that, and based on those factors that you looked at um, when you were deciding whether or not to join a club, do you feel like the clubs accurately represent the socioeconomic status of the student body at Princeton as a whole? I mean, I guess I really wouldn't know just because like, I don't know everyone's like socioeconomic status especially, but I do feel like I know a lot of people because I did a uh, freshman scholars institute before I started Princeton and I'm also in the scholars institute fellows program, CIF, which is CIFP for short, and that's just like a continuation throughout Princeton. And I guess a thing I do see a lot is a lot of people I do know from that, like some did join eating clubs, but a lot of them also went independent and they also like went into like their dining plan. So I guess it's just like really a personal factor and just how they see it because a lot of like, not a lot, but a small percentage, like I guess it would be similar to what the um, overall student body does. It's like some do this, some do that, and some do the other thing. So yeah. I'd say that's it. But like you do see no notice more like, oh, like, some eating clubs, like they're primar primar primarily white, or like you see that they're like a more obviously like better, rich, richer, I guess, and not better, but richer. Um, but yeah. All right. Um, so do you think that there's anything the clubs could do themselves to promote a more inclusive environment? I mean, I don't know what the clubs would be able to do since they do like run independently from the university, and I think they do like try to like reach out to other student bodies, but there's some eating clubs that... We'll just pop up. Yeah. You're good. You're good. Come You're on. You're totally good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll just wait for her to sit down. Yeah. But then would you mind starting, starting over. over? Yeah. Thank you so much. You can't <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're good. I'm just waiting for you to like settle in. Okay, wait, is that working? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna go watch TV in his room. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Okay. <sighs> okay. <sighs> totally good. I'm so sorry. No, you're no, so fine. No. This is no. a live.
library. <laughs> for every modern ones, we're like, let's make the library our filming space. <laughs> it has the best light. It does have good light. How was Whitman brunch today? That was <laughs> good. They had Oreo crepes. What is an Oreo crepe? It, they just put Oreo, smashed up Oreo crepe. It was so good. That sounds amazing. All right. Okay. Do you think the clubs <laughs> could do anything um, to further promote like an inclusive environment? I guess there's nothing that really comes to mind that they can do, especially since they do run independently from the university. And I think they like try their best to like reach out to like different audiences and stuff. And I think that one good thing that was done in the recent years, I think, was that they have to report like the um, the ethnographic um, what's it called like just the people that are in the clubs. And I think that's like it's really eye opening to see like which clubs like to see like the percentages, like the socioeconomic statuses. I don't know if they have to report that, but they do have to like report like race, race and ethnicities in each of the clubs. And I think that's like a good thing that they do that it, like just like lets you know like what's going on. Yeah. Um, and do you think that the university could do anything to help make the clubs more accessible to the whole student body? I guess like one thing would be the um, like being able to cover like those extra like one thousand, two thousand dollars, especially since I know like some students like maybe they considered it before and then they're like, well, like I don't really want to take out a loan. Like I want to graduate college loan free. And so like they decide not to. So I guess that would be like something the university could do, especially since I heard that they had like a two billion increase this year in their endowment, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it about that. All right, do you have any other thoughts in general on the eating clubs or Princeton or financial aid? I think financial aid does a really good job. Um, they do cover a lot. Like this university would not be feasible at all to me if it wasn't for the university's financial aid. I also think that eating clubs, like, they're a lot of fun, and, like, they do, like, it's a, I think it's a really good community, like, for students to be involved in, like, of any status and anything, especially, like, you get to meet, like, alums and stuff through the eating clubs, and then, like, builds connections, networking, it's, like, I think it's something really unique to Princeton, and something that I, like, really like about Princeton, and I think Princeton's a great place as of now, <laughs> but it could be better, definitely. All right, well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.